Next question is from Zilkis Chris. How can I quit my sugar di- addiction once and for all? I have yo-yo eaten and have quit sugar my entire 32-year-old life. This one, Adam, I think this is your deal. Yeah, you know, uh, this was actually something that I actually really liked the ketogenic diet for, or at least what I learned from it or got from it, right? So even though I don't follow a ketogenic diet, um, before that, I was a, like a carb junkie, right? I was I was eating 400 to 600 grams of carbs every single day, and I, I love sugar, um, and I crave sugar all the time. And so it's a, it's a constant battle. And I was always looking for things like hacks to like, you know, the rice cakes with cocoa whip and things like that to like, mm-hmm. you know, satisfy that craving uh, versus trying to find ways to like, you know, suppress it. And when I went on the ketogenic diet, um, I noticed that. I noticed that it dramatically went down, like almost completely gone. And that was one of my favorite things about running it. Now, I don't think there's anything magical about the ketogenic diet so much as I think that when you run a higher fat, higher type of protein, either one or both type of a diet opposed in a lower carbohydrate diet, I think it totally makes a huge difference. So, you know, I've completely changed my macro profile now. Like somebody who was consistently eating 400 to 600 grams of carbohydrates, now I'm like 200. So it's nowhere near that. And I don't have those cravings. Like I can't even tell you the last time I had candy. I'm sure I brought it up the last time I had candy on the show. I don't even eat it that often where it was like a constant battle and struggle for me. And same thing like with the ice cream. Yeah, anecdotally speaking, I don't know if there's any uh, research to support this, but anecdotally, sugar is one of those things that if you have it, you want more of yes. it. And if you don't have it, uh, at least in, initially you probably want it, right? So if you cut it out, you're going to have kind of this uh, these cravings that might last a week or two. Mm-hmm. Then at some point, it's like you don't want it anymore. And, and, and this I've noticed with myself. I've noticed with countless clients. And so the strategy to have a little bit of sugar in your diet – seems to not work for people who have who say that they have a sugar addiction. That's me. Like it's it's all or nothing. It's like yes. I, I cannot do the like Katrina has she doesn't have a sugar addiction. So she can have a little bit She can it. buy a, a, a freaking, you know, chocolate bar and put it in the freezer and have a square of it for the next two months. You know, and it not be like that I do not have that. If I have one square and even if I tell myself I'm just gonna have one, I'll eat that one square and then I'm thinking about that chocolate it kicks bar. You into gear. Yeah, for the next couple of days. Like literally like an addict. I totally feel like an addict when it comes to sugar. And I of course I know why, because of how I ate it when I was growing up, all the way even through my twenties. So for me, one of the best things to kick the sugar addiction was running a higher fat or higher protein type of diet and a lower carbohydrate. Doesn't mean you have to be all like, you don't have to be ketogenic to where you're no carbohydrates, but stick to low. And then the, the carbs that I do intake are like low glycemic stuff like yams and sweet potatoes, quinoa, like those type of carbohydrates, maybe rice, like those types of carbohydrates. And if, if any that I have in the diet and then predominantly uh, protein and fat. 